voice cover video. If you feel uncomfortable, then you can mute it. It's a boy and girl fan fiction. If you're homophobic, kindly leave. Remember, it's just a fan fiction. Don't take it serious. And if I do any mistake in voice cover, then please forgive me. Yogi point of view. Namjoon was fine. I should have told him. Everything. It's too late now. He will not believe if I tell him now. He has all right to do so. But the way he is thinking, it's not actually like this. His actions that they told me that he really hates me. It was all my fault. But I myself don't know why I did that. Yungi came out of his thoughts when heard knocking sound on the door. He granted the permission, then Ji Hang, the servant, came inside while boy and uttered, Mr. Min, Mr. Park isn't opening the door. What do you mean? I've been knocking on his door for almost 15 minutes now, but he isn't opening the door. It, it never happened before. What the... Yungi immediately got up worriedly and ran towards Sinu Chen. A fear rained down in his veins. Fear to lose Jenny. He was praying Jenny didn't do something to himself. He raced in front of Jenny's room and knocked once, twice and thrice, but couldn't get any response. He became more tense and broke the lock of the door while holding the doorknob. He almost forgot that he could use the spare key. Just now, he could only think about Jenny. The lock broke and Yungi gazed around the room, but Jimin wasn't there. He gradually ran into the room and heard the sound of water falling in the bathroom. Again Yungi knocked on it, but again got no response. Just the sound of water falling could be heard. He broke the door without wasting more seconds. When he felt something fell on his feet, he got panicked when saw it was none other than Jimin. He was totally soaked in water while the shower was on. Yungi immediately turned off the shower and ran towards Jimin's lying figure on the bathroom floor. He was shivering and curling up like a ball. Jimin, 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 open your eyes. Jimin looked at Yungi with his cheesy eyes and whispered with his trembling lips. Yungi, Yungi didn't wait for too long and picked Jimin up in his arms, heading towards the bed. Placing him on the bed softly, he wrapped him up in a blanket and started rubbing his body with it so that it can soak up the water from his blood. You'll be fine, Jimmy. Let me call the doctor. He was about to stand but couldn't when Jimmy clinged on him, wrapping his arms around him. Yungi's anger was giving him warm, and he snuggled more onto Yungi, moving his arms towards his nose. Stay with me. You are so warm. He almost whispered lolly and moved his head up while smashing his lips on Yungi, who was a bit shocked. He felt tingling sensation all over his body and stomach. Jimin was moving his lips slowly. Then Yungi also moved his lips because he knew he could not resist it. They both were moving their lips slowly in a sense. It was delicate, soft, warm and silky. Their hearts were beating faster in a sense. He realized that though he already went far, but still Jimin's softness in his actions made him melt every time. Maybe being hard didn't give him this feeling he was feeling right now. The softness was making him melt and feel love. His ears and nose turned pink due to those feelings. Slowly parted away when he realized that it was not he was supposed to do. He knew Jimin was not in his hands and he could not do it. He was already regretting his deeds and could not do something like that again. He cut Jimin's face and attacked his forehead with Jimin with closed eyes. He made Jimin lay down on the bed who was going to drift into sleep. But as his clothes were wet, Yungi began to just let him sleep in those clothes. He somehow changed his clothes and wrapped a new blanket over him. He saw Jimin's face which was looking cute while sleeping, just like a child. Yungi annoyingly smiled and couldn't resist himself to his on his forehead. He walked out of the room and closed the door after sitting inside for a while. Next morning, Jimmy slowly opened his eyes and sat on the back while rubbing his eyes deeply because they were still half dead. He rested his head on the head of the bed while yawning. 
Jason feels sad in his mind when he lazily sets himself with his closed eyes. Why I was dreaming about him. Jimin pondered him. I opened my eyes in a shock when I realized that it was not a dream. I looked down on the clothes and then remembered that I really kissed Yoongi last night. I felt my heartbeat increase when I remembered how I kissed him. How can I do that? That's so embarrassing. Shit, shit, shit. I should not think about it. I can note that my parents say. I can not forget what he did. He doesn't deserve my love. But my hate. And I will show him. But why I cannot do it? Why his eyes make me weak? I'm trying to hate him. And to my surprise, I'm successfully failing in it. Why it's so difficult to hate the person you love? Inside and got off the bed, wearing his sleeper. Just then, the door got opened and he found Yoongi there. Jimin didn't waste time and walked towards the washroom because he thought of ignoring him. But can Yoongi let it happen? He immediately walked towards Jimin and blocked his way. Jimin didn't look at Yoongi, maintaining his cold look on his face while crossing his arms on his chest. What had happened to you last night? Why were you on the floor? And why was the shower room? Were you planning to harm yourself? First of all, I'm not someone who gives up on life so easily. And second, if I was, then you have nothing to do with it. He said coldly and rolled his eyes. He was about to go when again Mingi stopped him. He even sighed frustratedly and finally gazed at him. Tell me when I'm asking politely to me. Wait, again will me like you did that night? Stop mentioning that night again and again, Jimmy. I'm already regretting. I didn't mean to do that. You didn't mean. Then why you did her? She me for four night and now you're saying you didn't mean that. You just did that just to satisfy your didn't you? He in turn sighed because of Jimmy's statement and calmed himself a little. So you won't tell me. No. And I'm not afraid of you, so do whatever you want. He said and opened the door of the washroom. Yungi knows that Jimin is stubborn, but he also knows how to make it work. He grabbed Jimin by his waist, who was about to enter the washroom, and carried him in his arms, making Jimin wipe his eyes. I don't know why I burst out on him, when I just wanted to ignore him. I was about to went inside the washroom, when I felt that he pulled me by my waist and carried me in his arms. What the hell is he doing? I started wiggling in his arms when I saw his heading towards the bed. Put me down, I said, I'll throw you on the floor if you keep on wiggling. Then when I stopped on my action, who knows he actually did that? I don't want my butt to land on the floor. I don't know why I feel so weak in front of him. No matter how much I try to do. He slowly put me down on the bed and again I ignored his face on me, having the same cold expression while hiding my actual feelings inside. Now tell me what actually happened. I don't want to. Ted still looking away but his heart started thumping in his chest when he felt Yungi dancing towards him and captured him in between his arm and the head of the bag on which Jimmy leaned backwards to maintain the distance in between them. One last time, I'm asking Jimmy. Ted in his teeth, low words, which was enough to give Jimmy a weird feeling in his heart. He made the eye contact with Yungi, whose eyes were as deep as the dark blue ocean. He uttered slowly with his cutting voice. I just slipped on the bathroom and, and, and the door got locked. He backed away a little from Jimmy, but still was in the same position. He was still looking at Jimmy with the same game. After a few seconds, Yungi stood straight and said, You should take care of yourself. He walked towards the door after saying it and stopped in the middle after hearing Jimin's voice. Why? Why are you showing my teeth here? I don't need this fake concern. Yungi left without saying anything. It to evening, Jimin came out of his room and walked down the stairs. Only Jimin, Yungi and few servants and guards live in this mansion. Jimin only talks to a servant here, who always brings food for him. He rarely comes out of the room, then he feels like walking around. 
After all, he is free to roam around, but he cannot step outside of the house. Sometimes it makes him frustrated, and he wants to run away. But know that guards are everywhere around the mansion, and if somehow he runs, he will be caught. So he is just waiting for the right time. Till then, he wants to find the answers of his questions, which always bother him. He wants to know some things about Hindi. He looks around and found everyone busy. He walks upstairs towards Hindi's room and, without making any sound, opens the door. Looking inside, he looks around and found no one there. He walks towards Hindi's bed, gazes around it. He checked the drawers and the bookshelves, but couldn't find anything. But then his eyes caught something. He again turned and found a photo frame kept there. He picked that up and found it was Yungi with a girl. He felt a warm sensation in his heart, seeing Yungi was holding that girl's hand while smiling. He flinched all of a sudden when a hand tapped on his shoulder. He turned immediately but sighed in relief internally, seeing the person. Namjuryo, what are you doing here, Jimmy? Uh, I came to meet Yungi. Where is he? He isn't here, I guess. Hmm. Are you all right? Hmm. Young, where is he now? I didn't see him for two days. Um. Uh, actually, he isn't feeling well. Wait. What happened to him? Actually, the thing is, he's feeling like it's his fault that you are here and bearing everything. Anyhow. It's not his fault in any way. He never wanted to see me in any trouble, and I know that. He doesn't need to feel guilty. Hmm. Can can you ask him to come here? I want to meet him, please. Hmm. I will. Thank you. Then Namjo noticed the frame in Jimin's hand and asked, "What's with it?" He pointed at the frame. Then Jimin realized that he was still holding that photo frame. He immediately kept that on its place. Oh, I, I just saw it. You should leave from here. Jimmy nodded and walked a little, but stopped again, looking back and found Namjoon blinklessly looking at the photo. He somehow gathered the courage and cleared his throat before speaking, grabbing Namjoon's attention. Hmm. Young, can you tell me who is that girl in the picture with Yungi? You should stay away from his personal things and life. Oh yes, I should not bother. After I am no one to know. That's not what I mean, Jenny. No, it's okay. I forgot the first place here in this house and his land. I myself don't know what I'm doing. I don't look so good. Thanks for reminding me. It's his life. He can do whatever he wants. He can have girls and boys and flowers and like that's his sister Jenny. Jenny immediately looked at Namjoon, standing at the door. What? The girl in the picture with him is his twin sister. Time skip. He Jimin is laying on the bed, looking at the ceiling, singing something deeply. Think his twin sister. Why I didn't know that he is a sister. Think about it, Jimin. It may be. If you get to contact them, you can get out of here. I don't know where they are. Are Yungi's parents also in this mafia work? As I remember, no. I know once I saw them and they seemed humble. They cannot be in this work. Hmm. How to contact them? I cannot even ask Ramjin Yung as he said to stay away from his personal life. Jimin got up, then heard a knock on the door. While letting the person in, he sat there, knowing Jihan must be there, bringing his food. He bowed and walked inside. Placing the food on the table, he asked him to sit there and have it. Jimin stood and sat there. He started having it when an idea popped in his mind. He looked at Jihan, who was standing there waiting for Jimin to complete it. Jimin asked after clearing his thoughts, Can I ask you something here? Jimin called him young, as he is older than him. Yes, Mr. Park, I am always here in your service. Um, well, since when you are working here, um, uh, I clearly don't remember, but maybe over three years. Hmm, quite a long time. Jimin thought for some more minutes and asked again. So, 
Do you know anything about Sridhar family? Huh? I mean, anything you know, can you tell me? I, I, I don't know anything. His expression changed all of a sudden when Jimin mentioned about Yoongi's family. You, you should not ask about them. And I'm sorry, I know nothing. Are you sure you don't know? Yes. Then why are you sweating? Yo, please, if you know anything, then tell me. Jihan walked towards the door and left. Okay, it's 10 in the morning and here Yungi came out of his room. He walked towards the stairs to go down on the ground floor. Then his eyes fell on Jimmy, who was also going downstairs, all lost in his thoughts. Yungi noticed his actions and ran towards him and saw Jimin was going to fall. He immediately held Jimin's hand and pulled him upwards, making him to bump on him. He secured him in his arms while his hands wrapped around his waist. They stayed like that for a good moment. Then Jimin pushed him a little, making the distance. Are you planning to die soon? Can you not see where are you walking? Don't touch me. I'm not interested, but if you keep doing these things, then it's not my fault to touch or come closer. Just keep your eyes and mind open to not get hurt again and again. There's nothing that hurt me more than you. He spoke straight, looking in his eyes and walked downstairs from there. Jimin's words were enough to pinch Yungi's heart. He already knew what he had done wrong, but couldn't able to express it. Here, Jimin came inside the kitchen and had a glass of water. Are you missing me? Jimin turned and saw Jim standing there with his ever soft smile. Jimin's eyes lit up, finding him there. He couldn't control himself from hugging him, which he accepted gladly. Yungi too saw them who were standing outside with Namjoon. Namjoon asked Yungi to leave them and come with him to his room to talk about something. Here, Jimin and Jin parted away from the house. I missed you long. You too. I, I'm sorry for not visiting you. It's okay, Young. I'm just happy you came. I wanted to talk to you something really important. Hmm? Tell me what is it? Can we talk somewhere else? They both walked from there in Jimin's room. Now tell me what is it? Jimin hesitated before saying, Uh, can, can you arrange me a pregnancy test kit? Okay, pregnancy test kit. Good. What? What? Did you just say pregnancy test kit? Shyong! He whispered immediately, covering Jin's mouth with his one hand. Don't shout, Long. Jin almost whispered while removing Jimin's hand from his mouth. Are you pregnant? I'm not sure yet. That's why I'm asking for this. I didn't know whom to ask. You are the only one whom I could rely on him. Of course you can. I'll get you by my own, okay? Jimmy nodded with a soft smile. On the other side, Yoonjin. The project is going well, Young. Hmm. And what about him? What are you gonna stop anything? We will. I just don't want to ruin it. Because I want it so bad. You saw this picture of yours. I had to say it's your sister. But I didn't tell him anything. Hmm. He must be out of it. So, what you gonna do? First, I let Jimin go from here to his house. What? Are you serious, Young? You cannot. It's dangerous for him. You are keeping him here to keep him safe. I'll make sure he's safe in his own house. It's dangerous too, to make him stay here. But you know he is just waiting for a chance and if you let Jimin go, he can use it to take it down. I know, and that's never gonna happen. Still, we should be careful. Don't worry, I have a better plan. I'll make sure this time we win. Next day, Jin came there with a pregnancy test kit and asked him to check. Jimin checked it and came out of the washroom in his home, where Jin was already waiting for him. Jin looked at him like questioning. Then Jimin handed him the result. Jin looked at the red sign and hugged Jimin with all his love, eyes filling with tears. The pregnant Jimin 
yes, I am home. He said slowly, while tears were shedding through his eyes. But don't let Yingi know about it. He whispered again, Jin's chest, who broke the hug and looked at Jimmy. But why, Jimmy? It's his right to know. I know, but but if he didn't accept it, and in case he did, I just don't want him to accept me because of this childhood. I never want this. I'm okay. I'm okay with it if he doesn't like me. But if he will accept me just because of this child, it will be more hurting him. So, please don't tell him you. If you say so, but you'll have to tell him by your own. Hmm. He nodded. Then, Jin again hugged him. No matter what happens, Yong is always here for you, okay? Yong will not let anyone hurt you. Jin is soft this time hearing Jin's warm words. He hugged him more tightly while Jin was continuously kissing. He said softly. The more days passed like this, Jin was still keeping his pregnancy a secret, but he knew he won't be able to do so for a long time. Somewhere he himself wanted to tell Yungi, but Yungi's behavior never let Jin to courage him to confess. His behavior was still making Jin insecure, though it wasn't Yungi's intention. He just simply wanted to feel Jin in that he didn't want him for his body. But he was failing to express his true feelings. It was clear that he never wanted to hurt Jimmy, but he was awfully failing to show it. And maybe because he already planned to send Jimmy to his own place. He stepped out of his room towards Jimmy's and stood there. He sighed before giving a knock on the door. He called Jimmy's name when they didn't get any response. What are you doing here? Jimin looked back and found Jimin standing there. You didn't sleep yet? Faye, why did you come here? He instead asked him a question, ignoring his one. Uh, I was just passing by, so if you don't have anything, then you can leave. He opened the door of his room and was about to close it. But Yungi's words stopped him there. You are free to go. Jimin turned back with a questionable look and almost whispered. What? You can go to your own house and live your life with me. I will be no longer controlling it. Why? If you always wanted to leave me, then why you kept me here? Tell me why, huh? Is it a fun to you, Yungi? Didn't you want to go? Is it even matter after what you did? You are thinking of leaving me like this? I said it wasn't intentional, Jimmy. It was a mistake. Mistake. His eyes went down. Oh yes, it was a mistake. Good for you. He couldn't stand it more and closed the door from inside. He sat there against the door, burying his face in his knees. His heart was feeling like it will stop soon. Tears made the way out of his eyes, showing effortlessly. No matter how much he was trying to be strong in front of him, but he was continuously making him weak. He was feeling like. He cannot stand for it anymore. Why are you doing it, Yungi? Why you never loved me? Why you never cared about my feelings? Why are you making me realize that loving you was the worst thing I ever did? Why are you paying back my love like this? Why you could never understand why we are left, we are left alone, baby. Your love is going to get rid of us both. He spoke, kissing his belly. But I promise, I won't, I won't leave you alone. Papa will never leave you, never ever. He was continuously crying while sobbing. He was remembering Yungi's words when he used to ask him, stay away from him. When he used to say he was regret loving him. And now, Jimin realized that he was right. This week after two days, Yungi came in his house and saw that servants were going to have their dinner. They immediately stood when saw him coming. He just signaled them to keep on sitting and having their food. He was about to step up on the stairs when Jihan called him. Mr. Min, Yungi looked back at him. Um, actually, I wanted to tell you that Mr. Park didn't eat anything. Wait. I don't know. He just said that he isn't feeling like eating. 
than making something he feels like eating. Um, actually, it's been two days already. He didn't eat properly. What? And you're telling me now? Sorry, sir. He bowed to apologize. Bring the food. He asked the servant to bring food. Young he walked inside Jimin's room with the food. Putting that aside, he called Jimin, who was laying on the bed. Young he knew he wasn't sleeping, but Jimin didn't utter anything. Have your dinner. I won't repeat again. You don't need to. I'm asking to eat. I don't want to. I'm saying it for your sake. It has nothing to do with me. Jimin sat on the bed. Yes, it has nothing to do with you. Then why do you care? I'll get sick, not you. Moreover, I will no longer stay here. Yungi didn't reply anything and sat beside him holding the food plate. Eat it. He raised his hand towards Jimin's mouth to feed him. Jimin looked at him, blinking his eyes, trying to figure it out. He couldn't believe Yungi was doing it. He was feeling hurt too, but right now, he couldn't resist it. He accepted it and had the dinner. Yungi stood there taking the plate in his hand when Jimin spoke. Don't do this because it's hurting. If you really don't care then don't show like you do. And if you do, then say it clearly. Don't make me hate you. Sleep well. He said and left. Jimmy sighed and slept there after fighting with his thoughts. At midnight, Yungi pointed to him. Is it this much tough to send you away? Why is it difficult to show my true feelings in Jimmy? Neither I could show nor hide. I know, my actions always hurt me. Now, when I think about it, I regret to not confess earlier. I wanted to embrace you. I wanted to listen to you. I wanted to see you laugh and smile. But all I could give you pain. I couldn't embrace you. I couldn't make you laugh. I couldn't give you happiness. How am I supposed to confess now? How, how am I supposed to show that I really care? How am I supposed to say that I always love you? He burst out in tears that started falling on the ground. It was more painful because he couldn't confess. It was painful because he always hurt the person whom he always loved and whom he wanted to protect. His silent cries was making it more painful. After crying for a good time, he went towards Jimin's room. Jimin was sleeping peacefully, which was somehow soothing his home. He slowly stepped towards him and bent down beside the bed. Sliding the hair strands back to his earlobe, he gazed lovingly at him. He kissed his head for some time and leaned to kiss on his forehead. He placed his lips on Jimmy's forehead softly and closed his eyes, attaching his forehead with Jimmy. I'm sorry, Jimmy. He almost whispered in his low voice. This is how you say sorry. Jimmy immediately backed away when heard Jimmy's voice. Jimmy sat there on the bed and looked at him. W- were you awake? If you are sorry, then why are you to say? Will it hurt your pride? It's nothing like that. And then, why don't you tell me what you get me feeling? Why you always hide her? It's so pretty so. If you won't say, how am I supposed to understand you? Lee? I'm not a mind reader. You, I, I will send you back to your home. That's not my answer, Yogi. Why are you hiding everything? You hide about yourself. You hide about your family. You hide about the accident. You hide about everything. I want to know you. I want. I want you to share it. It with me. How? How do you know about them? Jihan told me. Jihan. Flashback. Are you sure you don't know? Yes. Then why are you sitting? Young. Please, if you know anything, then tell me. Jihan walked towards the door and opened it. But before he could go outside, Jimin held his lips. I need to know Jihan. I know that you know about them. And I want you to tell me. I'll make sure Yungi won't do anything to you. Please. Jihan finally nodded a little. They both sat on the couch there. 
I don't know the whole thing, but as I heard that Mr. Ming had a twin sister. Mr. Ming's parents were handling a company here in town. It was the time when things were going to be the biggest thing. But before they could make that deal, an accident happened and they all died. Only Mr. Ming could survive. No one knows what happened, but after that incident, Mr. Ming joined the Mafia world. Some servants told him that it was a plan by Mr. Ming's rival. Mr. Ming was doing his graduation when this in- incident happened and he joined the Mafia to catch those people who killed his parents and sister. Mr. King also is with him to find out. Maybe they know those people but couldn't catch them. Is it somewhere connected to me? I don't know, but I guess no, because Mr. Ming always cares for me. It doesn't seem like it has something to do with you. Hmm. Thank you. And if you get to know anything more, then please let me know. Flashback and why are you giving everything along here? Why cannot you tell me? Because it has nothing to do with me. Really? I I don't want to leave you alone. I know you also don't. Then why are you pushing me away? I cannot let you stay here any longer. He was about to go, but before he could move further, Jimmy hugged him from behind tightly, placing his hat on his back. Please don't let me go alone. Please stop me here. If this time you let me go, I won't be coming to you again. Never ever. So please let me stay. Yuri could feel his heart was paining badly, as well as Jimmy. Jimmy's words and voice was making him weak, but would it be right to let Jimmy be with him? Walking on the street, running, huffing and shedding tears, he was lost in his own, without caring about others. It's night and the road is almost empty, yet some cars are running, when Jimmy is running there like men. Well, do you think Jimmy let him go? Yes, he did. Maybe that was what Jimmy said, but this boy isn't in his senses, running on the road without looking around. And suddenly, a car came in front of him in full speed. The driver was giving horn, but Jimmy's mind wasn't giving attention. And there, the accident happened. Jimmy fell there when the car hit him.